Um, a lot of people were asking me, uh, or not a lot of people, I'm, I'm making that up to make myself feel better. People, one person said they'd like this tutorial. So I'm gonna make it and, and it'll help other people hopefully. Um, what I'm gonna show you today, you can do uh, with recording stereo tracks, you can do it with recording um, each track individually. I don't know if you can use it while in overbridge mode, uh, unless you also have a MIDI cable hooked up um, from your inner a sound card or whatever to your, or your computer, your iPad, whatever to your uh, device. But um, this works with any DAW, any device, any iPad, whatever, anything that can record MIDI and play back MIDI and all that stuff. Um, I'm actually going to show you two things today. Uh, that kind of work hand in hand with what I've been with what I've been doing. So I have the Syntag here and I have a Fader Fox uh, EC4, which I absolutely love. It's got 16 faders, um, a whole bunch of banks and groups and everything. You can control like all the things with it. Um, and it, it's worked really well with my overall Digi setup. Um, I have the dig all three and I've been using it with all of them for my uh, for my productions and, and for my sets. Um, lately, I've been having fun with just these two here, the Syntag and the Fader Fox. So, one of the things that I've been doing first is I've started making a lot more use of the macro knobs on the digi boxes, especially the mod wheel. So right now, all 16 of these uh, knobs are uh, mapped to the mod wheels of tracks 1 through 12, channels 1 through 12 on here, which are for the syntax, and then I have 14 through uh, 16 down here for the digitone when, I am, when I'm using that. Um, and, and they just, they very simply, you know, uh, if you go into the note setup or the, the sound setup menu into the modulation wheel, this doesn't have anything assigned, but you can see, um, you know, it, 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 my dog is whining at me to, to go outside. Um, so I'm going to pause this for just a moment. All right. I am back now. Um, so where was I? Yes, mod wheels. So so I have them all set up and and that's great. So when I am finishing up songs to release, I, I tend to record them just stereo right out of the box. I mix in the box. I do a little bit of mastering afterwards, um, but, but nothing that could be considered any actual mastering, so don't ask. Um, but uh, what's annoying or bothersome or a pain in the butt or whatever you want to call it is whenever you record, if you're using all of these macros, the, these knobs, and you're doing a lot of like live automation, you have to redo it every single time. And if you make a mistake, you got to start over. And if you want to go back and mix something or change something, you've got to start over. And, and you just have to keep doing these knobs. And if you don't do it right the first time or the second, you know, it's just a pain in the butt. But I figured why not record them uh, into FL Studio as automation, and then I can use that to play back to record. So every time I record, it's the same. Um, but then, of course, when I play it live or whatever, it's it's different because I'm doing it all, you know, on, on the fly. So what I've done is in FL Studio, and again, you can do this in any any DAW, is I've got a whole template set up for recording everything. This is a little uh, old, but um, and it's still being, I need to change it around a bit, but I've got all of my digi boxes in here, and I have got... Um, all these channel racks and these are for program changes so these let me very easily uh, uh send program changes to the boxes to change patterns if i want although now with song mode they're not as necessary and then each of these different colored um uh, MIDI out modules are for each of the digi boxes. I have Syntact on channels 1 through 12 the digitone on one, uh 14 through uh or, or 13 through um 16, and then the Digitact, I don't really use uh, MIDI-wise very often, but I have it there just in case. And then each one also has all of the uh, MIDI CCs attached to them so that I can map to them so that I can, you know, control everything on the boxes. And again, right now I'm really only using the mutes and the mod wheel, but you can expand on this, and I hope all of you do. I am by no means an expert. So let's let's get back to the boxes real quick. So if you look at something like... Um, you know, this sound here. Uh, now let's, let's use, uh, nope, how about, nope. Ah, uh, we'll use that one. There we go, perfect. All right, so we have this, this sound on here, right? And, and let's see what happens when we play with our mod wheel. All right, so, so let's look at what's happening, right? We go into our sound setup menu. We go into our modulation wheel. So in this in this uh, mapping, 
it's moving, the mod wheel is sending the, controlling the wave knob of the synth, uh, and it's bumping it all the way up to 127. You know, it's opening the amp release a little bit more. Um, it, it's making the LFO1 depth uh, up by 91, and it's dropping the filter frequency, right? So on here, you can see the wave is set at zero. So setting the mod wheel knob, macro link knob to 127 means that when I move this knob all the way up, it's gonna go all the way up to there, right? Now, obviously, because there's other things being controlled, the filter frequency, the uh, LFO1, um, is this LFO1? The LFO1, the delay, you know, the delay obviously is being now LFO. So you get a different level of delay with every hit. And then and then you've got, um, what was the other one that was in there? The release. So it's, it's given us a little bit more release when that comes up to make it a little bit more interesting, right? So, so now when you're playing live, when you're playing something, um, Let's see what we got in here. So you can do a little bit. I mean, that one wasn't as noticeable. Right? Um, you know, here you have this synth. Right? So, so you've, got, you've got the opportunity to... Do some cool stuff here. Right, so that's turning everything up. It gets a little crowded because you're turning up delays and reverbs and you're making sounds, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're making sounds either brighter or duller and you're, you're extending release times and, and all that stuff. So, you know, obviously you want to be careful with how you're using it. But for me, I found it really gives you the ability to, to play uh, the song more live. I am not... Um, good at playing things. I'm not good at catching, catching balls in sports. I'm not, I, my, my manual dexterity, like I can type, um, I can't, I can't play any instruments. So the, the, especially now with the controller and the, and these electron boxes, the amount of performance I feel like I can do, it works for me. So, so I'm, I'm really looking to branch out with it. And I wanted to, again, share this with you guys. So now what do you do with all of this, right? You're, you're, you've mapped everything, you've written your song and it's like, all right, how do I, how do I record this? So we go back into your doll of choice. And for me, again, it's FL, it's FL studio. And so if you go into the MIDI settings, you can see down here, I have the fader Fox, uh, is enabled as an input. And then I've gone ahead already, obviously. And I've, you know, you can see here, I've, I've already started mapping stuff. So when I am actually moving things uh, on the fader Fox right now, they're going through the computer first and then out to the Syntact. Uh, you can also obviously hook this up to the iPad. You can hook this directly up to the box for when you're performing. You don't need a computer um, in between, uh, which is great. All right, um, so everything is mapped and everything is set out on their own channels, you know, channel one, channel two. Um, you, you can set all of your templates up however you want, doesn't matter. You don't have to do what I do, although, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, whatever. Okay, so how does this work? Well, I set my tempo of my um, DAW to the same tempo of the song. So I got 140 here, I got 140 up here. And then uh, I will uh, make sure that I'm sending my transport out. I have my thing here set to transport in. Now, I haven't been using Tempo Sync. I set every pattern on the uh, external hardware to the tempo it needs to be so that there's no, um, you know, jitter or timing issues between the recordings and the... And the um, automation and stuff and I have a rather powerful computer and because I'm only running a little bit of, of MIDI automation and uh, some um, you know one stereo track of audio I can keep it at the super low latency um, you know uh, which is which makes this a lot better if you're able to do that that makes this whole thing a lot easier uh, otherwise you got to mess with timing and stuff and I haven't done that so again don't don't ask about that one so uh, let's let's play around with this. So I'm going to hit record and right now I have this set I'm turning off the audio part. I have this set to record automation only Okay, and what will happen is we'll put we'll put the digitact or syntact rather um, in song mode and let's just go to uh, Well, we'll just play it from the beginning. All right, and and we'll see what happens now right now. I'm not gonna really um, Try and be super pro on this. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is like you got to remember, you know, what tracks are are armed at the time, which ones actually have mappings. Um, I tend to, 
you know, have my my drums and bass kind of organized around these first couple tracks, usually with synths and stuff up here and hi-hats and percussion on, on these guys here. So I, I know that my modulation is usually up here or with one of the bass um, things down here occasionally in here. Uh, but it's it's something to keep in mind. So sometimes I find I'll be I'll be playing and I'll, I'll be turning a knob and I'll be like, that's yeah, not doing anything, but I keep turning it anyway because it makes me feel good and, and I feel like I'm, I'm you know, I'm important. Um, so uh, that makes me, you know, um, you know, I'm special. Uh, so, so here, so, so I have it set to record. I'm gonna hit play, and it will start play on the machine because I've got them synced to for transport, and it will start recording. So we're gonna do this. I may uh, speed it up a little bit as it goes through, um, just because who needs to watch me sit here and twist a couple knobs for for ten minutes, right? But you know, let's let's see how this goes, and I'll, I'll play the good parts for you. So you see on this bass sound, it's it's pretty subtle. Opening up the filter a little, adding some reverb, a little bit more delay. Right, so we're just recording random knob twists and that'll all show up in a minute. So yeah, so there you go, right? So you get the idea, right? You, you record all your stuff. Now, however your doll does it, I don't know. So, um, you know, I don't know how much what, I, what I'm going to show you next will uh, uh, matter to some of you. But if you're on FL Studio, um, one of the biggest pains about it is that it records everything you did into one pattern, into uh, an event, um, into the event editor of every track. So when you double click on this pattern now that's been created, uh, you see it opens up the event editor and here are all of the controls. Now you, you have a couple options here. You can just leave it as is and, you know, use that for your playback. 
Um, I'm a much more visual person. I don't like that. And I don't like working in the event editor specifically. So what I do is I'll go here and I'll go to edit and turn it into an automation clip. This takes forever. I don't know why it takes forever. I don't know why uh, it's so difficult, um, but it does. And then I, I you know, sent, set it to this various sensitivities. Um, you know, you do what works for you. What I tend to do is keep it at the lower end. I don't know why I did this, see it's taking forever. What I usually do is keep it at the lower end. Um, and then when you hit accept, it takes a while. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. All right. So then now it is uh, automation and it has been removed from the, um, it has been removed from the event uh, editor. Um, let's just make sure that goes. No, let's put that back. There we go. Okay. So it starts from the beginning and that's my dog barking. He thinks there's somebody here. There is not. Well, I'm here and all of you are here uh, in spirit. So uh, you, you have that. And then in FL Studio specifically, I like to go in and I will, you know, some of these like extra points here, I don't, I don't really need that. You know, I'm okay with it being a smooth, a smooth move, um, smooth move, x -lux. Um, And then I, I will also go in here and move things around to time it and everything, you know, however you like to do. And then eventually you end up with um, something that looks like this once you've done all of the work. Uh, so here is what I've got. So this is that song. Um, you know, it's it's all it's it's all the automation that I recorded and then went in and it edited. Now I also like to rec uh, you know clean out all of the empty unnecessary stuff because I found that sometimes sending too much MIDI data at once uh, can can jam up the, the the gears and so why send something that's not changing I don't know if it actually matters but I did it anyway it makes me feel better yet again um, you know got to make yourself feel good so uh, that is how all of this works I think I touched on pretty much everything um, you'll see here also I've started to like tag uh, you know my song pattern changes um, these are in the song. These are now related to the song mode rows, um, which are fantastic if you haven't messed around with song mode. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload um, this FL Studio file for those of you that have not this one specifically, the template that I have. Uh, for those of you that would like to try and load it up, you can obviously feel free to change it, do whatever you want with it. Um, and if you are interested in seeing how some of these projects are laid out, on my Bandcamp right now, zelikovic.bandcamp or zelikovicmusic.bandcamp.com. Um, I should let's 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 check that actually. Uh, yeah, that would be a good idea, right? Uh, here, um, you know, Zelikovic music, right? Zelikovic, no, just zelikovic.bandcamp.com. Maybe I will learn that myself one day. Uh, so yeah, so if you go here, you can grab this extraterrestrial uh, for five bucks, and in it is. Um, the Syntax Project file with all three songs. I'm working on another one right now as well called Dixie uh, that will have the Syntax Project file. I also have um, two sound packs with 256 sounds each for the Digitone and the Syntax, and then another EP that's uh, Digitone, Syntax, uh, Digitact, and MicroMonster 2. But they are there's no project file included with those. Um, you can also stream all my music on all of your favorite or unfavorite streaming services. You can follow me on Instagram. You can go onto Facebook. You can uh, also check out Radioactive Sandwich if you're interested in some of the older stuff. But yeah, um, now I'm just rambling. That is my tutorial. Thank you if you made it this far. I hope this was helpful. And if you come up with any other ideas, uh, if there are any any um, methods that you that you have, any ways that you're expanding on this, please, 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 please. Uh, feel free to share. I would love to hear it. I'd love to see it. I'd love to be able to find a better way to do everything or a more efficient way. There's always, you know, there's always another tip that I can learn. And uh, so can't, can't we all? So thank you very much. Uh, goodbye.